Welcome to my next tutorial on linked lists in Python. In this tutorial, I will create a doubly linked list. Before you begin with this tutorial, I strongly recommend that you should watch my other tutorial on singly linked lists. Because a doubly linked list is very similar to a singly linked list, except every element in a doubly linked list has also a link to its previous element in the sequence. Every node in a doubly linked list contains three fields, data, next and previous. The data field is used to store actual value of that node, and it can be any built-in or user-defined data type. The next field is used to store the address of next field in the sequence, whereas the previous field is used to store the address of previous node in the sequence. Here you can see the conceptual picture of doubly linked list with three nodes. The very first node in a doubly linked list is also called head, and the last node tail. The previous attribute of the head node always points to none because the head node has no previous element, just as tail which has no next element, so that its next attribute always points to none. Now if you compare both doubly and singly linked list, you can see that each node in a doubly linked list requires extra space for each pointer which points to the previous node. But a doubly linked list has some advantages over a singly linked list, such as with the help of extra pointers, you can traverse the list in either direction. Besides that, a doubly linked list offers easy implementation of many operations compared to a singly linked list, such as adding new nodes into the list. Now let's create a doubly linked list. Here I have created a class called node which contains three attributes, data, next and previous. Data attribute stores the actual value of the node and in my example it will be an integer value. By default I have set the data attribute to none. The next and previous attributes have also default value of none. My node class also contains magic method string so that when I print node object it will only print the data attribute. Now I have introduced another class called dlinked list which holds three attributes head, tail and number of nodes. Again the attribute head is used to reference the first node in the list whereas the attribute tail is used to reference the last node in the list. The number of nodes attribute is used to count the total number of nodes in the list. My dlinked list class also contains seven different methods. Add as head, which adds a new node at the beginning of the list. Add as tail, which adds a new node at the end of the list. Print all, which prints all the elements of the list. Remove head, which removes the first node from the list. Remove tail, which removes the last node from the list. Total nodes, which returns total number of nodes in the list and add position, which adds a new node at the given position in the list. Now let's look at all these methods in detail. The init method which is also called constructor contains three attributes, head, tail and number of nodes. Head and tail have default value of none and number of nodes has default value of zero. The add as a head method adds a new node at the beginning of the list. In this method I first create a new instance of node class and then I check if the list is empty. If the list is empty then both head and tail point to same node. But if the list is not empty I change the previous attribute of the first node which now points to new node object and the next attribute of new node object which then points to the first node and then I set the new node object as head. In last line I increase the number of nodes attribute by one. The add as tail method is very similar to add as head method. In this method I first check if the list is empty. If yes, then the new node is also the first node in the list. If the list is not empty, I point the next attribute of the last node to new node object and the previous attribute of new node object to the last node in the list and then I set new node object as t. In last line I increase the number of nodes by one. The print all method prints all the elements in the list. It takes an optional argument reverse and by default it has boolean value false. If reverse is set to boolean true, then it prints the list element from tail to head. Otherwise it prints all the elements from head to tail. The total nodes method returns total number of nodes in the list. The remove head method removes the first node from the list. If list has only one element, then I delete that single node and set both head and tail to none. Otherwise I copy the second node in the list and then set the first node next attribute to none. Then I set second node as head and change the previous attribute of head to none. In last line I reduce total number of nodes by one. 
Remove loss method is very similar to remove head method, where I only change the next and previous attributes of last and second last nodes. The add position method adds a new node in the list at given position. In this method, I first check if the position argument is less than or equal to 1. If yes, I call the add head method. In next statement, I check if position argument is greater than total number of nodes. If this condition satisfies, I add the new node as tail. Otherwise, I traverse the list until I have found the given position and then add the new element at that position. You can also implement any other method according to your requirements. Now in main, I have created an instance of tail linked list class and by calling different methods of tail linked list class, I can add and remove new nodes in my list. So this was a very simple example of doubly linked list. I hope you have no basic understanding of a doubly linked list in Python. Thank you for watching this tutorial and please subscribe my channel for future tutorials.